Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back to Pay Luca Party. I'm Lady M, and if it's your first time, get into it, honey. I'm an artist, mother, and drag queen living in New York City, hustling to make ends meet and pay for my children. And if you're a repeat offender, thanks for coming back. I'm glad you enjoyed our holiday travel spectacular. Today, we're going to show you fashion and art in only the ways I can. So, I make a lot of things on my own including this glamorous updo, which I'll show you today, and this lovely pattern mixed wrap top. Buckle up, buckaroos. Are you ready? Get in, guys. We're going along for a ride. Hello, fashion lovers. Today we're going to make a wrap blouse from Mood. It's a free pattern. It's called Tacoma if you're looking to find it on their website. If you look closely, you'll notice this pattern is a little different, a little boxier, almost a little origami-like uh, compared to a traditional shirt pattern. So with that comes its own unique set of challenges. As you can see, this was a very large pattern, so it did take some time to piece and taper together. We're just here trying to stay inspired indoors during these cold New York winter months. Uh, we really enjoyed all the couture shows that have been coming out. Jean-Baptiste Valli, Victor and Rolf, lots of different inspirations for us to create new fashion. Next up, we're going to lay out our fabrics. We have a sort of sheer, blousey animal print and a sort of swirly gold, a little bit of a crisper cotton. Just as important as pattern selection is fabric selection. So in mixing these two, I wanted to create some contrast and visual interest, as well as use the sort of drapier, blousey pattern for the body and the sleeve portion and give you um, a little more structure in the collar as well as in the ties that go right around the waist, the sort of sash element. Here we are carefully cutting out our patterns. I think our inspiration for this sort of piece and why we like to make separates is to just get more versatility out of our drag and just sort of have some different daytime elements we can mix with other sort of fancier nighttime pieces as well. Now onto our bodice construction. With this sort of puzzle piece origami moment, we actually started with the side seams, which is kind of counterintuitive to most bodice shirt construction, if you will. Usually you do those very last, but uh, on this pattern you did them first. So that is a new thing that we learned this week. this portion of the sewing, we decided to go with French seams, which seemed like an obvious solution for us. 
uh, due to the light sheer fabric we were working with and just how we really wanted it to be a professional looking garment. Here we are sewing it on the machine. And then we go back in with our shears and really carefully clean up, making sure everything is flush on the fabric. Snip, snip, snip. Breaking out the iron to press our seams and keep everything looking nice. Really important when you're doing garments that are semi-sheer or fully sheer to make sure they look good inside and out because you are going to see both sides of the seams. Stitching the wrong sides of the garment together as one traditionally does. Et voila, we have our beautiful French seams. As you can see, both sides exactly the same inside and out. Uh, and it's just a beautiful, useful tool to have in any home sewist or drag queen's toolbox. Shoulder seams, here we are pinning them together. We love mood patterns because they're much clearer in different regards than other patterns. They have picture instructions sometimes as well as the written verbal step-by-step -step instructions. So definitely recommend checking those out if you haven't ever used a mood pattern before. As you can see, we just had to consult our phone because some patterns are different than others and it's okay to go back and check what you're doing rather than having to unstitch something that you did make a big mistake on later on. This part was pretty straightforward. It is the shirt ties or sort of belt moment, if you will. It's in that gold, swirly, ochre cotton. We take two long rectangles that we've cut out, flip them inside out, stitch them up, and then flip them right side out again. It'll give you this nice little contrast pop of color at the waist, really giving you that nice little hourglass moment in your silhouette. We stitch the end of the tie at kind of a 45 degree angle, and then we trim it up. Interestingly, this was in the description, but like not in the pattern, but it's nice detail at the end of your sash that gives it like a real finish to it. Instruction time, starting with the first tie, stitching up the back, laying out and then attaching the collar, attaching the collar, and then attaching the second tie. Here we have our peplum, which Kind of resembles a crescent shape or even a toilet seat if you will. Here's our daytime diva ready to take on the town and whatever may come her way. Pair her with sensible slacks or a pencil skirt. She's ready for a brunch trip or just to the grocery store to buy quinoa. Back, back, back again. Here we are with a wig styling session once again. We have a lovely little chocolate number with some additional wefts that we have sewn in. All materials from How's Your Head Wigs styled by us. Here we are, we're taking her from her previous style and just cleaning through, picking through, brush, brush, brushing every last bit 
and sort of giving her an easy restyle, a uh, spraying her with wig luster to help loosen up some of the sort of tension spots, if you will, so that when we remove the teasing, it'll be much cleaner and keep her a little slippery, if you will. Our goal for this restyle is to take her from our look we did in our solid gold biker photo shoot, which you can find on our Instagram, House of Malagatani, and then to turn her into a transitional style. We're thinking 60s, easy breezy, updo, Brigitte Bardot, slightly messy, not too perfect, so we're gonna do a lot of it with pins and no cutting, which is always good, and keep her something fluid so she can always be restyled again and again. You can see she was a very full wig, very dense and luscious, but she does take some time to clean up and reset. The goal with this transitional style is when we're done with this, she'll just be ready to steam, pop the pins out, and then she's on to something else. You'll notice that I like to switch between different brushes, a harder bore bristle brush, as well as a paddle brush, and of course the requisite teasing rat tail comb. They just give you different effects and it's good to have different tools at the ready to either break up tension or teasing, uh, as well as smooth out the hair. With all that prep work done, we can get to sectioning out our front section which I'm referring to as a faux bang because I'm not going to cut it. I'm gonna sort of hide the end up underneath with a pin. So it gives you that sort of bang effect without having to do any cutting on this wig. This will leave her versatile for various future endeavors and styling expeditions. Now that she's sectioned off, we're just gonna pin and clip her and keep her secured. At this point, we start the actual updo process of the updo, and while I would definitely not consider myself an expert at updos, I learn from my mistakes and I get better every time. So we take our harder bore bristle brush and we're slowly coaxing the fibers upward, going from the nape of the neck. You can also use a hair dryer uh, very carefully to smooth them out, at least on the top layer, which is another great way to get a slick updo. I've seen people do. As you can see, we're beginning the delicate dance of having too much hair and only two hands to hold it. It's important to take your time because if you're going to see the nape of the neck in this updo, you really want it to be slick and sleek. So we keep trying to gather it with our hands and with the other hand, we try to keep smoothing it and smoothing it and smoothing it. When we feel we've got enough of a handle on her and she's smooth enough, we break out our zip ties so we can secure this ponytail. Ideally with one hand you hold the ponytail and the other hand you zip tie, but sometimes you just need an extra set of hands because she's too much to handle. I prefer zip ties because it's easier to not get the hair tangled for myself. Some people do use hair ties and that works for me sometimes uh, in shorter styles, but with this thick of a wig, uh, the zip tie usually works better for me. It all comes down to your personal preferences. I usually use two zip ties to secure her and once I've snipped off the ends, I stick two pins uh, crossing each other right under the ponytail and that also adds an additional level of security to the ponytail. At this point, it's time to unclip the bangs and then brush out those ends again because with synthetic hair, like I've mentioned, she'll tangle no matter what. I've started to slick her up and give her a little teasing behind there, give her a little bump, and then gently place and smooth out the swirls for the faux bang. You can 
see I try to be clever with the swirls and also hide the pins in the process. This part for me is usually very trial and error. Uh, I sometimes reference off camera on my phone. I look up vintage photos that I might have in a reference folder or just on Pinterest uh, to give myself different ideas. Also just give myself uh, inspiration while I'm working sometimes. With the bang basically done, I'm just touching up gently little spots and giving her a light spray just to smooth out those couple little layers. When are messy, but like not completely messy. Now that the front is done, we move on to the back. I take small sections, I try to vary them. This part is also definitely personal preference, but I definitely added some barrel curls, some loops, all sort of different things, all the while trying to make sure it was balanced on the left and the right side of the head. So I definitely spin her around a lot and look at it from different angles to make sure I'm giving her an even look, which is what I wanted. The goal was to place the pieces in a way that they sort of interwove, almost like little puzzle pieces of hair fitting nicely together. I hope you can see in the different angles of shots we've tried to give you, sort of the same thing that I'm doing in person while I'm styling, which is to look at it from the back, the sides, uh, sometimes I even look to look at the hair from like below and above, just so that I'm getting a different perspective, because somebody might see it from below if they're shorter than me when I'm in drag, so I know it's a little OCD, but these are some of the random things I think about when I style hair. At this point of the styling process, I'm just trying to look for any dead spaces. Maybe there's a spot where you can see the zip tie for some reason, even though with the headscarf, we're gonna cover it. Uh, I still like to cover all my bases just in case. Now we've broken out the headscarf and I'm just trying to make sure I put her on evenly. I've stuck one pin in the back and I'm gonna probably put a couple secret pins up behind the bang where you won't see them. Even though she's tied, I wanna make sure she lays perfect with the hair. And that's our glamorous updo. Not too fussy, not too messy. Giving you daytime diva, going to a luncheon. Maybe she has a charity function. This hair can go so many places and can be applicable to so many styles. Hello. If you've got this far, thank you for watching. Lady M appreciates you. Hopefully you're feeling inspired, or maybe you just learned a few more tips today. Stay tuned for more videos with drag crafting, fashion, and glamour. As always, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.